All right, let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the second ActivityNet Entities Object Localization Challenge hosted by me, Marcus, Yanis, and Jason. So the challenge is sponsored by University of Michigan Robotics, PNG, and Nova Labs Europe. Many thanks to our sponsors. So here's the outline of my talk. First, I want to briefly go through um, the challenge overview and then uh, introduce the evaluation metrics, including the winning criteria. And after that, I want to give you a brief overview on the data set and the baseline methods, GVD. And finally, the most exciting part, I want, we want to announce the challenge results and have the winning talk. So the challenge has two subtasks. Subtask one aims to locate objects determined by a caption in the video. So the input will be a video and associated caption. And in this caption, uh, we have a we have predefined a set of objects. So in our case, we have 432 target objects to localize. And an example output of the system should look like this, and which has bounding box drawn over the video and locate each of the target objects. So for subtask two, there's actual requirement, which is description generation. So the input now is only the video, no caption. And uh, we want the model to output, uh, first output a, a caption to describe the video, and at the same time, locate target objects in the video as bounding boxes. So for the evaluation metrics, on subtask one, we adopted a localization accuracy at 50% IOU. And I want to show you an example. Um, so given, uh, given the same input from the previous slides. So uh, on the left-hand side is the prediction and on the right-hand side is the reference. So say we have a prediction like this and the corresponding uh, reference is like this. And let's start from the red box. So the red box correspond to the first word, men, uh, in the caption. So let's uh, if we compare the, the prediction, the reference, and the red box has over 50% IOU with the reference red box. So that's a correct prediction. And moving on to the second box, the green box, which corresponds to TV, and it overlap uh, over 50% IOU with the ground truth uh, TV box. So that's a, also a correct prediction. And for the third um, bounding box, the blue one, Actually, um, uh, the prediction locates a wrong couch and the overlapping between the prediction and the reference is lower than 50%. So that's an incorrect box. And finally, for the table, um, is a correct, correct prediction. So in this case, the localization accuracy is 3 divided by 4, which equals to 75%. And for subtask 2, uh, we use a metric called f one or. So in this case, we need to first generate a caption. And in the caption, only the word objects that are pr correctly predicted uh, will move on to the grounding uh, object localization evaluation. So again, um, the prediction and the reference. So say in prediction, we the model output a man is watching TV on a bat. And, and the corresponding boxes look like this. In the reference, the, again, we have a man is watching TV or a couch next to a table and the bounding boxes. So the red bounding box overlap, uh, the prediction overlap with the reference, so that's the correct one. And for the green bounding box uh, on TV, the bounding box is not high, high, tight enough, so that's the incorrect prediction. And for the third one, uh, our model output bad in the caption, which is uh, which does not exist in the reference and is a hallucinated object. So we do not move on to the object um, evaluation. That's an incorrect prediction. Then we can get uh, the metrics. So we can have the, we can get the precision recall and the F1 score all, uh, which in this case is 0.29. And for the data set, we use uh, activity net entities, which is proposed by us um, at CVPR 2019. And it augments uh, the 52,000 captions from the activity net captions data set, uh, which actually is covered uh, in the previous session of this workshop. And we augment that data set with 158,000 bounding box annotations. 
and we locate uh, 432 high frequent objects in the data sets. So, uh, not, so one quick example is here. So uh, given a um, sample frame from the video uh, and the corresponding caption like this, we recognize all the, the objects and noun phrases and then locate them uh, in the image, in the video. And so we public and uh, we provide public and both the noun phrase annotations and the object locus, uh, annotations. So you can download the data with this link or scan the QR code with your phone to download the data. And compared to existing data set with both descriptions and bounding boxes, our activity net entities has more um, bounding boxes and have a variety of object categories. So here's a, one example from our data set. And so we identify all the noun phrases in the, um, in the caption, uh, also the objects, and then locate them in the, in the sample video frame. So we want to point out that here, uh, our goal is not object detection. So we don't want to uh, exhaustively annotate every single object in the video. And that would be really time consuming and expensive, especially for a data set at our scale. So our goal is more uh, connecting the two modalities, the visual modality and text modality. So we want to um, sparsely link the noun phrases, the object uh, to image region, to video regions, like what we have here. So we only sparsely sample one frame from the video that we can clearly see all those uh, objects. But you may ask, what if we cannot fit everything in one frame, right? So in that case, uh, we allow uh, the annotators to annotate in multiple frames. So in this case, the ball is invisible in the first frame, so it's annotated in the second frame. Okay, so we propose a, a baseline method uh, in our uh, CVPR 2019 work. And in that work, uh, grounding happens simultaneously with caption generation. So we adopt three proxy tasks to leverage the bounding box annotations which I will cover in details in the next slides. And we call our model Grounded Video Description, or GVD. So take a subtask two, for example. So uh, given a few sampled frames from the video, we first run the off-shop detector to generate object proposals and get the corresponding uh, region features. And we also, we're also interested in the uh, objects in the region in the bounding box and also like the, the location of the bounding box in the, in the video. So we, all, we use, propose to use a grounding module to further encode the class information and the location information of the bounding box and such that we can get a refined feature. So once we have the refined feature, we pass it to uh, the tension module, uh, module B and the language decoder module C. So what, what happens here is uh, the uh, regional attention module um, applies a, a receive a signal from the language decoder, usually the star signal, and, uh, and then the module B use it as a query and to apply attention on the refined feature to get attention weights, and then perform a weighted sum between the attention weights and the refined feature and provide that as an evidence to the language decoder. And finally, language decoder output words. So the, this part, uh, module B and C are relatively standard. And what makes us unique is that uh, while performing the tension, we provide a supervision uh, for that module. So we, we guide the model where to attend to. So in this case, we want the model to output man so that we, so we, we, we tell the model to attend to this man, uh, region about man in the image. And so the, the ground, the reference will be a binary vector and we apply cross entropy loss between uh, the prediction attention weights and the ground truth attention weights. Besides, we, we want to uh, look, uh, verify that the words we generated are actually in the image. So we don't want to have any hallucinating objects. And so again, we use the, the grounding module to locate uh, a man back into the image. So here uh, we compute the similarity score between the embedded, word embedding man and the refined features and uh, so that we can get, uh, we can localize where, where, where is this, where, where this, this object. 
and uh, we apply the same supervision to these the weights. And we repeat, repeat the process until the end of the description. And the loss function consists of four parts. The first one is the standard language reconstruction loss. And the second one is on the uh, attention weights. And similarly, we will have that for the grounding weights. And um, the last one is um, a classification loss on the regions. So this part is um, the essential module for our subtest two. And we're, so in this here, we got um, the caption, the description of the video, and at the same time, um, the, the grounded regions in the, in the video. And for subtest two, because we have the reference caption, so uh, we can just fit it into the model during inference. So we do not have to generate caption uh, by our model. All right, here comes the challenge results. And first, I want to share with you some stats. On both subtest one and subtest two, we have two teams participated. And the winning criteria for subtest one is the localization accuracy, while for subtest two is the F1 score. And this year we bump up the price to 4,500 in total uh, compared to the 3,500 last year. And the minimum requirement for awarding the prize is as follows. All right, next, I will be glad to announce the winner of the 2021 ActivityNet Entities Challenge. So the winner goes to Team RUC AI M Quebec from Yermin University of China and Inria for both subtest one and subtest two. Congratulations to the winning team. Note that the evaluation server will remain open after the challenge. As we can see from the leaderboard, the winning solution significantly outperform other solutions, including the baseline method. And here's a teaser on the winning solution. And the secret sauce is vision language pre-training plus MDDR. And we, you will be uh, hearing more about the winning solution uh, coming next. All right, let's welcome team RUC AIM Quebec to give us the winner talk. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Lu Danren from AIM3, Renmin University of China. On behalf of our team, I'm glad to have this opportunity to report our system for the ActivityNet Entities Object Localization Challenge 2021. This is the outline of the talk. Task introduction, proposed method, experiments, and conclusion. The target of the entity's object localization is to evaluate how grounded or faithful a description is to the video. There are two subtasks in the challenge. For the subtask one, grounding with ground truth sentence, it requires to ground the given object words for video frames with spatial bounding boxes. For the subtask two, grounding with generated sentence, it consists of two stages. Firstly, automatically generating descriptions for the video. And secondly, identifying the object words in the description and localizing them in the video. To better serve the two subtasks, we propose a two-stage method, which includes a caption generation module and an object grounding module. For the caption generation module, we propose a unified multimodal pre-training model and a LSTM-based concept predictor. The concept predictor aims at generating more detailed captions that contain rich objects for better localization. It takes video features as inputs, output semantic concepts, where the ground truth concept labels as the nouns and the verbs extracted from the annotated captions. Therefore, 
The input of our UMPM consists of video sequence, concept labels, and caption sentence. To learn the semantic alignment between video and sentence, we adopt the multimodal mask language modeling for pre-training, that is, randomly mask out 15% word tokens for prediction. While adapted to caption generation, we fine-tune the pre-trained UMPM using sequence-to-sequence -sequence objective. For the object grounding module, we need to firstly identify the object words in the description and then ground object queries in given video frames. For object queries extraction, we find that directly selecting words corresponding to object vocabulary will introduce some non-object words by mistake. Therefore, we use space to parse object words in the descriptions. For grounding object queries in given video frames, we fine-tune MDETR, which is the state-of-the-art text-conditioned object detection model for grounding. To reduce the prediction noise and further improve the performance, we make post-processing based on MDETR. To be specific, we use different random seeds to train multiple models and design a method called IOU voting to fuse the results. Next, I will present our experiments. For the subtask 1, we evaluate our grounding module with metric localization accuracy on validation set from ActivityNet entities. MDETR provides a much stronger baseline compared with GVD as the localization accuracy is improved to 59.69, even without fine-tuning. After fine-tuning and post-processing, the performance is further improved to 73.19. For the subtask 2, we simultaneously evaluate the captioning performance and the grounding performance. In general, our two-stage manner outperforms one-stage method GVD. What's more, fine-tuning, post-processing, and the object queries extraction policy with spacing further improve the overall performance F1 or percent to 26.05. In final submission, our model achieves the localization accuracy of 72.57 for subtask 1 in the testing set, F1 or percent of 24.77 for subtask 2 in the hidden test set, which rank the first for both subtasks. We also visualize our method's performance. In the case shown in the figure, as for caption generation, our method targets men and the rope successfully compared to the baseline. And when using spacing, words jump and camera are recognized as non-object words and are excluded. As for grounding, the fine-tuned MDETR grounds more accurately for word men. Our proposed method improves the performance of the whole system. In summary, we propose a two-stage method for the challenge, including a unified multimodal pre training model for detailed caption generation and the fine-tuned MDETR model with post-processing for better grounding. Our method achieves the state-of-the-art results on both subtask 1 and subtask 2 in ActivityNet Entities Object Localization Challenge 2021. More details can be found in our technical report. Please feel free to contact with us if you have any questions. Thank you.